Hello everyone and welcome to round 17 of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. Uh, after three consecutive wins once again, Fischer uh, ma made two draws and now he faces a uh, chess international master from Argentina, uh, Jorge Alberto Rubinetti, uh, who of course, uh, aside from being a very strong uh, chess player, uh, won the won the Ar Argentinian Chess Championship four times. Uh, he represented Ar Argentina eight times uh, in the Chess Olympiad, and also uh, aside from uh, qualifying for the interzonal tournament of 19 1970 in Palma de Mallorca, he also uh, qualified for 1982 interzonal tournament. So it's a wonderful game, and it's a game actually that uh, starts uh, Fisher's legendary winning streak. Uh, so I, I do hope you're having a wonderful Friday because this game will surely improve it if you if you enjoy playing against the Sicilian defense. So before we check out the game, uh, I do have a nice photo challenge for you. Uh, so who are the two gentlemen in the photo here? Uh, there you have it. Best of luck to everyone. I will also add uh, a link to this photo in the description below if you know you want to check it out uh, on the source page. Uh, so there we have it. Now let's check out this wonderful game. Uh, Fischer uh, has the white pieces like we've said and he opens with e4. Uh, we have c5, knight to f3, d6, uh, d4, c captures, knight captures and the knight to f6. Knight to c3 and here e6 is played uh, going into the Scheveningen variation of the Sicilian defense. Uh, bishop to c4, the Sozin variation, Fischer's favorite uh, variation, uh, a6 and the immediate bishop to b3. Uh, we have b5, uh, and here, although you might think, okay, b4 is a threat, uh, you, you'd kick away the defender of d4 pawn as this knight is attacking it, uh, one might play f3 here. And although f3 is a fine move, Fischer doesn't mind uh, about this pawn, rather he plays uh, castles here. Now, uh, there is a very nice game, uh, I believe it's from the US Championship of 1957, uh, where Fischer played, played against James T. Sherwin, where Sherwin played uh, b4 against him, and then Fischer replied with knight to b1. Although it's a very nice game, I will put a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out. Uh, but I will also put a link in the description below <laughs> from another game, uh, it's from the New Jersey Open, also from 1957, uh, where Fischer played uh, a beautiful game against J James T. Sherwin. Uh, it's also uh, one of the games from Bobby Fischer's My 60 Memorable Games. Uh, I did a video on this game, so feel free to check that out as well. It will be in the description below. Uh, but better yet is this knight to a4 idea. Uh, now, if knight captures on e4 is played, uh, then white can continue with this rook to e1 move. Uh, and after you blockade, of course, d5, defending the knight, then comes bishop to f4. And uh, here uh, is the main idea why this pawn can be sacrificed after black continues development. Now, going for castles, uh, you can go knight to f5, and now you will either... Uh, black will either castle and you will win the, the bishop pair with knight captures on e7, or if black even captures the knight, uh, then you have this queen captures on d5. A, a beautiful move, uh, threatening to capture on f7, but also threatening the rook on a8. And after queen captures, bishop captures, uh, black's rook on a8 is under attack. Uh, if you don't want to lose the rook, of course, if you move the rook, then uh, bishop captures knight. So the best idea is g5 here. Bishop to e5, now comes f6, defending this rook, and now bishop to c7. Uh, after bishop to b7, you do have to give up something as black. Simply captures, rook here, captures on e4, rook captures on c7, and rook captures on f5. Uh, this is only one of the lines, but this is one of the lines where black plays the most precise moves, uh, and at the end of this little skirmish, white will simply be up a pawn. And uh, as, as I've mentioned, there is also the game where Fisher played against the James T. Sherman, where B4 was played, Fisher replied knight to B1, which was also a very nice game. So B4, not something you want to do. So Fisher doesn't mind, he simply castles. Uh, we have bishop to B7, and now rook to E1. And also, uh, again, there's no way to actually uh, go for B4 here, as now comes bishop to A4 check. Uh, you block and now knight to d5. Also, this d5 square, a very critical square uh, when, when fighting against the Sicilian, you can often sacrifice a knight or even a bishop there. And now you will either capture with the bishop uh, and then all will be well or you will continue developing. Uh, but if you capture, then pawn captures, uh, you have to block, knight to f5 is coming, uh, you have to castle and then knight captures with check and it will be a much better, much better game for white. So almost never a good idea to push this b4 pawn, but a nice idea uh, if you're playing against the Sicilian to know that b4 is not actually a real threat. Uh, so okay, knight bd7. Uh, bishop to g5, h6 now, uh, bishop to h4, and the knight to c5. And now again, uh, we 
uh, come to a moment in this game. It's only move 11. Fisher is about to make his 12th move. Uh, shows that uh, Fisher is really up to, you know, uh, uh, he, he's really into chess theory and he knows uh, uh, the current uh, advancements in theory that have been made. Uh, he plays bishop to d5. So offering a full piece here. And uh, it's not uh, the first time this move has been played. It was played in 1969 already by a couple of players, one of them being Zoltan Ribli. Uh, so definitely an interesting move. Uh, and here, if you you probably should play something like queen to c7 to simply defend the bishop here and allow this bishop captures, g captures, and queen to f3 now. Uh, attacking the f6 pawn where white will have a better game but in this game Rubinetti decided to go for uh, e captures on d5 he accepted the the piece sacrifice uh, Fisher played e captures on d5 uh, opening up a discovered check from the rook to, to the king king d7 uh, you don't want to block with the bishop if you block with the bishop then then again you get knight to f5 and white is completely winning uh, but e captures on d5 and now king to d7 you want to try and run away with your king uh, here comes b4, uh, knight to a4, uh, if you can, you are up a piece, so why not trade even more pieces, Fisher doesn't mind, knight captures, pawn captures, and what do you do here, how do you continue your attack? Uh, well, uh, simply c4, a very nice move, uh, defending the d5 pawn, uh, and also preparing queen captures on a4, there's no way to, ca to stop queen captures on a4, so uh, here Rubinetti simply started running with his king. Uh, we have queen captures on a4 and now queen to d7, uh, offering a queen trade. Uh, as Fisher is uh, down uh, down a piece, although he, he does have a very nice pawn chain, he, he is down a piece, so of course he does not want to trade queens. Queen to c2 is definitely an idea here, uh, preparing to push c5, the queen is already aligned with the king and the c file, knight f5, bishop g3, all very nice ideas here. Uh, but Fisher goes for a different idea, he goes queen to b3, uh, and now we have g5. Bishop to g3 and here knight to h5, attacking Fisher's bishop on g3. Uh, but here Fisher simply continues to push c5, uh, threatening to open up the c file and then the rooks will be able to, to get hold of the black king. Uh, d captures on c5 was played, b captures on c5, the threat of course now being c6, uh, attacking the queen and the bishop. And here there are really no good moves here for black. If you try and, uh, you know, remove one of the attackers, as this bishop on g3 Fisher has is a monster piece, really controlling the black king. So even if you start with something like knight g3, c6 is coming. The knight doesn't have any useful in-between moves. Uh, bishop captures, captures, and after queen moves, you will get this rook to e8 check. The king has nowhere to go, you'd have to block, and now you can even capture the queen, or even better, queen b7, deliver checkmate. Uh, another thing after this, uh, b captures on c5, threatening c6, uh, you could try something like bishop captures on d5 to attack the queen. Uh, but uh, then pretty much any move uh, white will make will be will be very nice. Uh, queen b6, uh, now black has to make a move. The bishop is really controlling all of the squares beautifully. There's no way to offer a queen trade. Uh, there's no good way to activate the rook. So after something like queen b7, where black would try to trade queens, you would simply not allow him. Uh, still, uh, you know, keep an eye on all the important squares, and after captures, captures, uh, something like bishop to e4, whatever you play, c6 is coming, there's no stopping c6, so whatever you play, c6 is coming, you know, to open the lines, and after queen moves, of course, if you capture uh, with the bishop, then rook to c1, uh, but after queen to c7, now comes queen to c3, uh, eyeing that rook on h8, so whatever you play here, queen e5, uh, rook captures on e4, for example, queen captures, and now rook to e1. Queen has to move, and now rook to e8 will, of course, be deadly. King moves, now comes rook captures on e8, a8, and now it's actually white who is up material. If I'm not mistaken, white is up a pawn here, but that is uh, far less important. Black is, uh, you know, getting crushed here. Whatever you play here, uh, there's no, no defense, I mean... There, there's no good move here for black. So whatever you play, you will either uh, go into a nice endgame that you you can win easily, or black will get checkmated. So here, after b captures on c5 to stop c6, uh, Rubinetti tried queen captures on d5. He uh, offering a queen trade here, and uh, it's a very nice move. Uh, now c6 doesn't really work. Uh, from this position, but uh, he missed one move that it does. So feel free to pause the video here and uh, try to find uh, a winning idea for white here. Uh, and, you know, I will give it a couple of seconds as usual if you want to decide whether to do it. Uh, so, okay, 
Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. You have just started uh, Bobby Fischer's legendary winning streak. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, here Rook to E8 was played. Uh, what do you do here? Well, there's only one good move. Uh, you can uh, block with the queen. Of course, that's not a good move if you lose the queen. Uh, so king to d7 was played and now comes queen to a4. If you calculate it all the way to here, uh, then it's very nice. Uh, bishop to c6 blocking, uh, the only move that doesn't lose the queen. Uh, and now comes knight captures on c6. And it was in this position on move 24 uh, that uh, Jorge Alberto uh, Rubinetti resigned the game. Uh, it's uh, 24 moves, so I believe it counts as a miniature. Uh, why did he resign? Well, any any continuation he goes for loses uh, terribly here if you capture the rook uh, then you get rook e1 check king moves and now knight to a7 opening up a discovered check from the queen uh, after we move the king rook e8 will be checkmate the bishop once again very nicely guarding that c7 square uh, on the other hand after knight to c6 if you try queen captures on c6 of course you get rook d1 check and now you have to move the king and queen captures on c6. Uh, you're getting checkmated here with rook e1 check. And again, rook to e8 will be checkmate. And lastly, after all this uh, is said, you can even play rook captures here. But then the, the very simple knight b4 check uh, wins the queen and the game. The queen is attacked. The king is in check. If you block with the queen, the knight is also guarding c6. So uh, not a lot of thing you can do here. You can try and protect the queen with the king, which is a bit silly. But, you know, why not? But even here... First, you will lose the queen. After your king moves, you will get check here, and then uh, you will get checkmated in uh, very, very soon. So yeah, uh, knight captures on c6. Uh, Rubinetti resigned the game, and uh, a beautiful uh, victory in round 17 against the Sicilian for Bobby Fischer. So that's the game, uh, round 17 of Palma de Mallorca 1970 Interzonal Tournament. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Anton Baklanov, Sonia Shinek, and uh, Scott Adams for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon uh, with the Bobby Fischer series. And perhaps if we you know, have something like happen out of the ordinary in the chess world. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, and uh, see you soon.